There was no talk of Brexit among the exiles at O'Connor Park yesterday. All the London team wanted to remain in the football championship. Offaly, though, were strong favourites, hoping to get back on track after their loss to Westmeath. Crowd congestion certainly wasn't an issue here. The attendance was only around 500. And Niall McNamee, so often Offaly's main man, gave them a two points to one lead after 12 minutes. London were playing with the help of a strong wind and they struck for a goal on the quarter hour mark. Some hesitancy in the Offaly defence punished by Patrick O'Hara and this score kick-started the London challenge. London manager Kieran Dealey missed his brother's wedding in Limerick where he was the best man but he headed there straight after the game. O'Hara's point saw London lead 1-4 to 2 points after 23 minutes but they didn't score again for the rest of the half. After a sluggish start, Offaly came storming back into the game. Anton Sullivan, the army man from road, blazing over a point. And perhaps there was a goal there for the taking. One of a number of goal chances his team missed on the day. The faithful finished the half strongly and Nigel Dunn slotted over the last two scores of the half. One from a free and one from play and we were level at the break. Offaly seven points, London 1-4. The second half was a one-sided affair with London tiring. Nigel Dunn, who scored seven points on target, as Pat Flanagan's team reeled off eight points in a row. While their effort never slackened, it took London 27 minutes to get their first score of the second half, awfully led by 10, when this score came from sub Owen McGeehan, a native of County Down. But Offaly were well out of sight and Bernard Allen completed the scoring to seal a seven-point victory on a day when the Offaly management made full use of their subs bench. So Offaly progressed at their ease to the next round, winning by 17 points to 1-7. For London, the championship journey is over for another year. You have to give them credit, like, you know, it's great to see them coming over here and, and playing at this level. Uh, they probably don't get enough opportunities uh, um, to progress. Um, but uh, it was great the effort to put in up there today and like, we were just delighted to get across the line. I thought in the first half we, we really put it up to Offaly and, and we went up by four points, which a, a away game for us was very, very difficult, obviously. So they were always going to respond and I think they, they're a top team and they responded very well to come back at us. Corrigan Park in Belfast, the venue as Antrim and Limerick came face to face in the qualifiers for the second time in three years. With Limerick's win back in 2014 at the Gaelic grounds, standing as their last championship victory. Having been slow out of the blocks in their provincial loss to Fermanagh, it initially seemed a case of lesson learned for Antrim. As they pounced for the opening two points of the game inside 90 seconds, Ryan Murray's opening score followed by this effort from Kevin Niblock. But Limerick, who had travelled north shorn of the services of several first-teamers, including injured captain Ian Corbett, were to respond impressively. Sean McSweeney pointed a free before Ian Ryan struck for the game's opening goal after just six minutes. The standing captain gathering Shawnee Buckley's delivery to finish to the net. And it got even better for the visitors just two minutes later. Dara Tracy fell by Sean McVeigh, leaving referee Sean Hurston to award the penalty. McSweeney stepping up to convert as Limerick assumed an early 2-1 to two points lead. Indeed, Limerick were almost in for a third goal, but Chris Kerr was to come to Antrim's rescue, denying Ryan. Playing with the breeze, Antrim sought to work their way back into it. Matthew Fitzpatrick and then Patrick McBride with the game's next two points. And it was to be McBride who kicked the final score of the half as the sides retired at the break with Limerick on top, 2-2 to six points. The second half was to produce just a combined seven points and only one from play. That a fine effort from Limerick cornerback Stephen Cahill nine minutes after the throw-in. Antrim threw freeze from Murray and substitute Tomas McCann reduced the deficit. But with it looking increasingly likely that they would need a goal or two, goalkeeper Donal O'Sullivan was to prove Limerick's key figure. Three fine saves in the second half, including this one from Ryan Murray as Limerick held firm. McSweeney's free deep into stoppage time ensured a three-point lead and job done for Limerick. 2-6 to nine points it ended. Limerick's first championship win since 2014, propelling them into the next round. Yeah, big time like with Joe, 
throughout the year we had probably haven't been taking our goal chances and it was it was great both to, to execute today in terms of in terms of those but also some great um, saves by our goalkeeper in the second half that really kept us in the game as well so delighted overall for the spirit the lads showed um, a lot of questions have been asked in the, in the week in terms of how much passion they had for Limerick football like you can't doubt that like they put in a, a huge performance today in terms of just general attitude and you know, as a management team that's all you want like you know. All right, well, for John Bruder to keep going and, and Limerick to keep plugging away, the reporter is Siobhan Madigan. It's been an honest horribilis for Down and Longford compounded their woe at Park Esler yesterday. Dennis Connerton's side were straight into the groove despite three early wides. They raced to a four points to two lead by the 13th minute. A fine score here, finished off by Robbie Smith. The Midlanders, unhappy with their showing in the defeat to Offaly earlier in the summer, were intent on turning their season around and were further in front soon after, leading seven points to three. Down have lost every single inter-county game in 2016, but yet were slight favourites with the bookies. Conor McGinn's goal was a much-needed score to keep the home side in the contest. Longford turned in at half-time, four points in front, James McGivney playing a crucial role and their advantage could have been more but for eight first-half wides. Eamon Burns, the down manager, had harsh words at the break and they had the desired effect as Donal O'Hare finished off a fine goal within 60 seconds of the turnaround. Seven minutes later, and amazingly, Down got a third goal to put themselves three points clear. Again, it was O'Hare who would finish it off, but crucial was the role played by the captain, Kevin McKernan, in the build-up. Longford needed to steady the ship, and their captain, Mickey Quinn, played a lead role in that, ably assisted by wing-back Dermot Masterson. Indeed, this Masterson score, with four minutes remaining, had Longford back in front by two, but Down responded with points two from Ryan Mallon and Sean Dornan. 90 seconds into added time, Quinn put Longford ahead once more, but they gifted down the levelling score. Brady sent off for this challenge. And that left Donal O'Hare with a simple tap over free to mean extra time. It was back to a full complement of 15 against 15 for the extra time period, but down would force the issue early on. Mark Poland and the excellent O'Hare points followed this effort from Ryan Mallon. Sub Liam Connerton responded for Longford before their first goal. Smith's shot rebounded nicely for Shamie Hannan. He didn't need to be asked twice, and that left it 1.23 to 3.16 as they turned around and into the final 10 minutes. Scores in the last part of extra time came at a premium, but Longford grabbed the all important one a second goal. A terrific run by Donald McElliott, and Mark Hughes finished it off. No square ball. Linesman and umpires had a consultation. The Midlanders finished on a high and in the end had four points to spare. They'll fear no one in tomorrow's draw for round 2B. Full time in Uri, Longford 224, down 317. Disappointing, very disappointing for the boys. I thought they worked very hard today. And I thought at the end of normal time we could have got a result, but that's the way it goes. We went to extra time and Longford finished the stronger team. I'm elated and absolutely delighted. Such a change in emotion from the time we were in Tullamore. It's just fantastic. It was uh, difficult to win tonight. We thought at half-time that we were comfortable enough and that we just hold on in the second half, but directly after half-time the ball is in the back of our net. So we had to work very hard. Uh, down came at us very strongly in the second half of that game and extra time was just pulsating. It was so difficult. The emotions keeps topsy-turvy sort of stuff and it's up and it's down and it's everywhere. But we just got over the line. Last year's All-Ireland quarter-finals for Manna visited Wexford Park in the hope of another good summer run through the qualifiers. In their way, 4th Division Wexford, who last year had defeated Down, when then a 1st Division side. It was, however, the Ulster side who started well with the wind advantage. After full forward, Sean Quigley landed a point off the hands of Anthony Masterson. With the home side's marksman Donald Shanley levelling in the opening minute. But with Quigley in good form, his side led by four points to one inside eight minutes.
Then Tomás Corrigan started to find his range on a night when the corner forward would end with nine points. But Wexford, under the guidance of David Power, saw his side hit the front with the only goal of the match on 22 minutes. Half-back Simon Dunahoo up an attack to finish this move to the net and edge Wexford ahead. The Erne County responded with four of the next five scores, including an equaliser from Barry Mulrone and a lead point from captain and midfielder Owen Donnelly to give Fermanagh a 10 points to 1-6 half-time advantage. The home side now had wind advantage in the second half and briefly hit the front with scores from John Tubrath and full forward Ben Brosnan. But from there, it was a night for Tomás Corrigan to remember. He would add a further six scores to his opening three before the break. The visitors produced some fine team play and running at the home defence, they would stretch their advantage to five points with this effort from lively centre forward Ryan Jones. And when attacking half-back, Aidan Breen scored his second point of the night Pete McGrath's side were on their way to the next round. As it finished, for Mana 19 points, Wexford one goal and 11 points. A very competitive game uh, against Wexford. We knew it would be. We knew they would be well organised, uh, feisty, committed. And there were all those things. And indeed, for periods of the first half, they matched us in every aspect of the game. They had some excellent scores. Their forward play was good. Their movement was good. And at times we were struggling, and we had the breeze in the first half. Uh, second half against the, uh, the breeze did die a bit, but we played more controlled in the second half. And as the second half wore on, I think that our, our superior fitness maybe came into play. Maybe two or three chances maybe to go further ahead, and that was really the turning point. I think we left them back into it. They got some very good scores, and to be fair, I suppose the last 10 minutes they looked comfortable for their win. Uh, but in terms of of the performance, I was very, very happy with it. I thought we kept at it, and, and even to the end, we got it back to three points again. So, it, like, it showed great heart, and, and I suppose we never gave up. No, they didn't give up, but uh, Fermanagh continued their good form, and you're a fan of this Fermanagh team, Colm, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a fan of uh, Fermanagh. I'm also a fan of Pete McGrath. Like, Pete McGrath, after the Donegal match, I think he was a bit frustrated, maybe a bit angry straight afterwards, but he promised that Fermanagh were going to get back up on the bike again and get going, and they have delivered on that promise. Isn't it great to see Sean Quigley on tour as well, being brought around <laughs> the country? <laughs>